Hey, what's up everybody, how you doing? Let's talk RV solar. Well, hey, welcome back to the channel. I am your host, Robert Anthony. I am Rob the RV Guy. In today's video, I wanted to go over the solar installation that I've done on the Bigfoot 25B 25RQ travel trailer out of which I live full-time traveling the country doing photography and video. For those of you that don't know, um, in the late summer I spent some time at the National RV Training Academy doing some certification work so I'm a registered RV technician now. A lot of you have been asking, hey, what have you done on your solar? And I'm going to go over that step by step with you with regard to what I did and explain to you the logic behind why I did what I did. Let's start on the roof. On the roof, of course, you've got your solar. You've got your solar panels, which are your energy generating source. Now, on my particular roof, the space was limited. It's a 25 foot trailer, thereabouts. Um, and it has, you know, a, a couple of, it has a skylight, a couple of attic fans or vent fans. I've got the air conditioner system. It has my Starlink, and it used to have the King amplified antenna. On top of the fact that I've got a luggage rack, which I don't fully understand, but I have a luggage rack on the back, which impedes the ability with regard to moving the solar panels totally to the back of the rig. So I had a lot to work around. When I installed my solar panels on the roof, I was able to get a total of 1,000 watts on the roof. I have four rich solar 200 watt panels, and I have two HQST 100 watt panels. The reason that I have those that way is because based on the mapping and the system with regard to the layout, I knew that I would be limited in space to get up to a thousand. So what I did is I found that the voltages on the HQST and the Rich Solar, even though the wattages are different, the voltages were almost identical, which meant that I was able to put those in together with each other in a parallel format uh, allowing me to increase the amps, of course, but um, they would not decrease each other's efficiency one bit because the voltages were about the same. And one of the other reasons that I had to go with a couple of 100 watt panels was basically because of the Tetris way in which I had to make all of these work. That was how I had to do it. Now, there are systems in place that I could install that I could lift all of the solar panels up above, getting probably double the amount of solar panels up there because it would be floating above everything. I didn't want to have to remove solar panels every time I wanted to get up there to service something. So I chose to go this way. Not that those systems are bad. In fact, they're quite effective. But in my case, that 1,200 or 1,000 watts of solar suits our needs. So that was what I put on the roof. I have those two arrays arranged at 500 watts apiece. And the reason that I have two is because in the event that one of the solar charge controllers goes foul or one of the panels or two of the panels in an array happen to malfunction, I still have one array at 500 watts combined with the side array that I've installed at 200 watts. Uh, that would still give me 700 usable watts while I get the problem fixed. The problem with one solar charge controller is if anything goes bad on that roof, the entire array is done for for that day. And that's not something that I was really excited about. And so what I did on the advice of a friend is uh, I actually had two arrays set installed for redundancy. Similar to multiple hard drives on a business computer, you always have hard drives running in redundancy so that if one of them malfunctions, the other will still work. So moving into the cabin, my rig when I bought it from the former owners had uh, a couple hundred watts of AGM batteries on the front and a go power inverter installed and these are all forward of the axle. Now you guys know if you followed us for much of a time that we pull with the Toyota Tundra and the Tundra is a half ton truck so that put about 450 pounds of additional weight forward of the axles between those batteries and that inverter. And uh, since I was kind of redoing the whole system, I decided I wanted to move all of my equipment toward the back of the rig. So on our rig, we've got a nice storage compartment back there that would work ideally for that situation. So we pulled everything out and began the process of moving everything toward that back storage compartment. That was the way that I wanted to do it. 
So you may recall from this video here that we actually pulled our refrigerator, the absorption refrigerator, out of our rig and we put in a residential refrigerator. Well, on the day that we made that switch, that whole compartment was empty. So I used that opportunity to pull my solar wires down through that area and put them down underneath in the dinette area compartment in preparation for our ultimate wiring project that we would eventually run knowing that we were going to be moving all of our equipment to the back. So I spent some time on the phone with Grant, uh, the owner at Bigfoot, who was quite helpful in discussing with me some options or some ideas that he had with regard to actually pulling all of the wires from the front to the back and from the back to the front required to run the system because when you put your inverter in, you've got to wire it up to the panel and then you've got to have the shore power go back to the inverter. All of these things are in the front and they had to go to the back. So basically an afternoon was spent pulling wires. We were able to pull the wires on Grant's suggestion of going over the top of the heater, behind the shower, through the bathroom, behind the bath vanity, through the, uh, through the nightstand in the bedroom, and into that, uh, into that charge compartment there, or into that storage compartment there. And that was where we ran all of the wires. The day of the install came and we started to install our equipment. Now you'll see I have the Victron Multi Plus 3000. This is a 12 volt version, available in 24 and 48 versions as well. But I did the 12 volt version, and that is a 3000 kVA that produces about 24 to 2500 watts steadily. It peaks out at 5000 watts, plenty more than enough for our 30 amp rig based on the fact that we're pretty good with power management. We're not running everything all the time. We do spend most of our time off grid. So we, ha we do have to be careful. We can't run, for example, the microwave and the air fryer at the same time, but we can certainly run one or the other with no problem whatsoever. The heart of the system are the batteries. I have two Epoch 300 amp hours. So I have a total of 600 amp hours or 600 times 12 is about 7,200 kilowatt hours of battery sitting in the back. These are great batteries. They're heated uh, with their own BMS, Bluetooth BMS. They're great. And they function well with the Victron system. I have the Victron Lynx distributor. That is where everything attaches and distributes from a wiring standpoint. And then I have three charge controllers. I have two 150 charge controllers that run the entire roof array. And then I installed a really tiny baby uh, solar charge controller, an MPPT charge controller from Victron. That runs my side port. The side port that I installed actually handles our 200 watt deployable panel. I use a rigid panel. I do not use the fold up suitcase panels. They're not nearly as efficient. They are not nearly as robust and able to handle the abuse. And they're twice as much, sometimes three times as much money as what a good rigid panel would be. So I chose to instead use a rigid panel. I put DC breakers on all of my solar coming in. That's what we learned at the NRVTA. I agree with that theory. I like that idea. I have them both on the positive side and the return side or the negative side. I think that's a matter of good preventative safety and that's the way I would install any system that I would install for anybody else. I wasn't going to do it. I was on the fence about it, but I did put in the Victron Servo GX. What the Servo GX is basically is the brains of the system. Everything in the back connects into that little tiny box with a little umbilical cord. That box manages and monitors what every device in that system is doing. Every one of them. The shunt for the batteries, the, uh, the charge controllers, uh, the, the inverter itself, just everything. It knows what's going on. And I put in the, the, uh, the Touch 50, which is a small LED screen that is inside of the rig. I have access to and can program my inverter and do everything, just about everything, that I would need to do with that inverter through that touch screen inside the rig. It's not an inexpensive thing. You know, you're looking at like 500 bucks to have that installed, but because we live full time and, and having access to that on a consistent basis was important to me, I felt that that money was money well spent. It's something that I recommend if you're doing an elaborate, robust solar system. I think it just goes without saying that you want that installed in the heart of your system to run everything. Not only is the Servo GX great from that perspective, but it also allows me to access the system remotely. As long as I have internet access, which we always do, 
um, I'm able to see what's going on with my system. The thing that I love about the Victron, Victron Remote Management or the VRM system that they have is it's, it's very robust as far as letting me see how much power I'm generating in a day. It tracks everything. It provides me all kinds of graphs. It lets me know if there are errors or there are malfunctions. It is a really powerful system of management. And if you were to have me install a system for you, I would be able to log in and see what's going on and make changes to your system all remotely should that be something that you would ask of me that you would like me to do. So it's also a great tool from that perspective. That's the nuts and bolts of the system that we put in. I believe that 1200 watts on a rig of our size is about the max. If you're interested in talking solar, by all means, reach out to me. You can find my website now at robthervguy.com. Find me at robthervguy.com. You can see all things solar there. You can contact me through the website if you have questions or if you'd like to start talking about doing ins installation in your own system. I'm going to be doing installations uh, in solar. Most of the stuff that I want to do is going to be custom. And of course, it's going to require a conversation that we would need to have back and forth about what your needs are, what you want to run, whether it makes sense for you from a monetary standpoint or not. Of course, that's not for me to decide. I'd love to sell you a system, but with that being said, uh, some people, the solar just doesn't make sense. It makes more sense maybe to just have a generator that you can charge things up. All of those things I can help you with if you reach out to me. So I hope you found this video helpful. I would love to have you as a subscriber. If you have found it helpful, if you could just hit that like button, the subscribe button, and the bell notification so that you know when the next video is going to release, that would be great. In closing, let me just offer to you this. Um, I had thought about considering moving to a 48 volt system due to the system efficiency. I do believe that 48 volts is going to be the wave of the future. With 48 volt components coming down significantly in cost and Victron, for example, really seeming to do more and more to release more and more components that work in the 48 volt environment, I can see a time where 12 volt systems are just not installed anymore due to their lack of efficiency, the heat that they generate and everything else. 48 volt, I think, is going to be the wave of the future and we are ready and able to install 12, 24 and 48, but it's either going to be 12 or 48 if I have my druthers. I think that it's something to look into, most certainly. As we close out this video, this video is the video that YouTube thinks you want to see next. This playlist right here is going to be all things modifications and you, you know, RV stuff. And if you click the circle, you're subscribed. And again, I would love to have you on board. I'm Robert Anthony. I'll see you in the next one. Rob out.